in the uh, relatively troubled times in which we live, cultural diplomacy is more important than ever. What we are seeing in societies around the world uh, is um, this feeling of not trusting the other, of being suspicious, of even being paranoid. And then that paranoia manifesting in violence and in hate uh, that, that we see, and in turn impacting policies in various countries. I don't want to give too many examples, but uh, uh, you know, the only antidote to that uh, trend of paranoia or uh, hate uh, is to create better understandings amongst different cultures. Because when you see the one you don't know, the other uh, with suspicion, it's because you don't know enough about that person. But when you do understand that person better, you say, hey, this person is not very different from me. And that's how humanity is. So I think the key role of cultural diplomacy today is in reinforcing that sense which comes from this ancient Indian ethos that the word is one family. Vasudev Kutamkum is what an ancient Sanskrit text said almost 2,500 years ago. In India itself, we started on this path of cultural diplomacy very soon after our independence. In fact, uh, back in 1950, within a couple of years of our independence, we established the Indian Council for Cultural Relations as the principal vehicle for Indian cultural diplomacy. Uh, and that really does a lot of interesting things in terms of sending Indian dance groups and music groups out. It has a visitors program called the Distinguished Visitors uh, Program, etc. Um, their whole ethos is to try and create collaborations between Indian artists and overseas artists to host overseas artists. Uh, and so I, I would like to say that in certainly in the developing country context, India has been one of the pioneers in terms of deploying cultural diplomacy. Well, you know, over the last couple of years, uh, particularly with the strategic partnership agreement that we now have between India and UAE, we've seen an real increase in our interactions. To me, however, the uh, partnership can't remain a government-to-government -government partnership. It has to trickle down to a people-to-people -people partnership. And we were honored when we were invited to be this guest of honor nation uh, by Her Excellency Dr. Huda Khamis al Kanu, uh, because I saw this as an opportunity to expose mainstream Emirati audiences to some of the finest aspects of Indian culture. Now, in my conversations with my Emirati friends, I know that many of them, particularly the ladies, have a great uh, affection for Bollywood. Uh, many of them go and see Indian films. But I do want to make sure that their understanding of Indian culture is not limited to Bollywood and they don't come away with this fairly cliched perspective of, uh, of, of in, in India, that there's so much more to our country's culture and civilization than just its very vibrant uh, film industry. Uh, and, and the festival is important and our partnership is important because a lot of Indian events that take place, because we have such a large Indian diaspora here, tend to be of the Indians for the Indians. Uh, here's an opportunity for us to bring in some top quality performances and hopefully encourage Emiratis and other members of expatriate communities to come and also enjoy them the same way Indian community enjoys them. I see that with this beginning, uh, once we brought some top, top quality acts, the audiences in Abu Dhabi uh, see the quality of presentation that we uh, bring, that it'll whet the appetite for a lot more. Uh, I see this uh, really as a staging platform for a much more vibrant collaboration where we see Emirati musicians going to India, Emirati writers going to India, participating in Indian festivals. Because I think that's been a relatively uh, uh, lower profile uh, aspect of our engagement. And I certainly hope that what we are beginning here this month is going to be the, bi the start of something really important. Well, you know, I want to really uh, congratulate the leadership of uh, United Arab Emirates, um, His Highness the Crown Prince of uh, Abu Dhabi in particular, 
for his vision in articulating a very different uh, pathway uh, to international understanding. And that is reflected not just in initiatives like the Abu Dhabi Arts Festival, but also in the Ministry of Tolerance and the Ministry of Happiness and several of these other initiatives. You see it manifest in the Louvre, for example, and how it tries to very consciously, very deliberately bring diverse cultures together with that larger objective of how to build understanding between cultures. And, and, and the Abu Dhabi Arts Festival really, uh, in my opinion, I saw some of the performances last year, really does try to promote that particular ethos. And I, I'm happy to say that as part of our participation from India, for example, we have one of our top calligraphers from India who's working with a very prominent Emirati calligrapher, Mr. Mohammed Mendi, uh, to produce something which is a shared piece of uh, art that will be showcased. Uh, some of the artists who are coming are going to be doing workshops at universities and other places. So that a participation in the festival is not just about that performance where you do a great show and uh, you get an applause and that's it. To my mind, it's also about the relationships that are being forged between artists, between the arts community and the knowledge and understanding that is being spread through different platforms. I want to say that, uh, you know, we take great pride that India and UAE have a truly exceptional and historic relationship. Through Abu Dhabi Arts Festival, through India as guest of honor nation at this great festival, I think we are giving an entirely new dimension to this rapidly uh, evolving relationship. And I think by bringing people together, we are really establishing a lasting durable platform for our friendship.